Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at a simple volume question where we're gonna come down to using the disk method. Now, the solids that we're gonna be encountering are called solids of revolution, where we basically take a region and then rotate it around a certain axis. All right, now your two formulas here, the disk method and washer method formulas are very similar but different. Here, for the disk method, your region, when you rotate it, leads to cross sections that are disks with no holes in them. If you rotate a region with a gap in it, that's gonna to lead to using cross sections that are washers. All right, now a way to determine which formula you would wanna use, try sketching the region with the basic curves that you're given. So here, we're rotating the region bounded by the curves y equals e to the x, the horizontal line, the x-axis, y equals zero, and then the two vertical lines, x equals zero and x equals two. So let's go ahead and sketch that. I'm gonna start with the graph of the exponential function first. This is a fairly important graph or function for the calculus sequence. So hopefully you know the graph. There's a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. And then your basic graph or shape looks like that. All right, so that's your graph of e to the x. We have the graph of y equals zero on the bottom here. So that's just the x-axis. And x equals zero and x equals two are vertical lines. So we get this region bounded on the left there by x equals zero. and there on the right by x equals two. All right, now if we take that region and then rotate it about the x-axis, I always like to sketch what a, the solid looks like, just a very rough sketch of that. And if you rotate that, the solid that you get looks roughly like that. You can see here down to this side, it's gonna be kind of narrow at the back end here. And as you go in that direction, it's gonna flare outwards. All right, now we are looking for the volume here and you can see since your region goes right down to the axis of rotation, there is no gap. So this whole region, when you rotate that about the X axis, there's no gap. So there's not gonna be any hole here, which means if we were to take a cross section and I pull that out, one of your thin cross sections looks like that and there's no hole. So here our cross section is a disc. So that's gonna tell us to use the disc method. And the disk method is really simple. The function f of x here, that by itself means nothing, but f of x is referring to basically the curve that gives you the upper boundary of your region. And here, our curve on the top is e to the x, and the distance from the x-axis up to that curve, that is exactly what the y value of e to the x gives you. And here, that distance, that is exactly the radius for your cross section, which is a disc. So here, f of x is e to the x, and that is our radius. We just need to plug e to the x into that formula. So if we set up our integral, we have it as an integral from zero to two. And what we integrate is pi times the radius squared that's the formula for the cross-sectional area of a circle. So we integrate basically pi r squared, where we're using the radius as e to the x. All right, and this gives us what looks to be a really simple integral, but even some of my best Calc 2 students make some simple errors here. Now, the first error I find is kind of incorrectly dealing with e to the x with that external power of two. So first thing to mention, 
e to the x squared. This is not e raised to the x squared. So just be careful, follow your basic exponent rules. You have an outer and inner power, those are gonna multiply. So correctly here, e to the x squared, multiply, you'll get e to the 2x. And that makes all the difference because e to the 2x, you can find an antiderivative for, but e to the x squared, that has no antiderivative. So just be careful of those common mistakes. So what we end up integrating here is pi, which you can pull that out if you want, times the integral from zero to two of e to the two x. And depending on what you know, you could go through all the work for a u substitution, choosing u as two x, or you can use what I call the one over a shortcut, which I'm gonna have linked over to the side. That's gonna make this really easy. Here you have your linear expression up in that exponent, ax plus b here, we're using a as two, b as zero, And here, when you find an antiderivative, you get a one over a factor. So one over two, and then times that basic antiderivative. And we just evaluate that now from zero to two. So if you're not familiar with what I call the one over a shortcut, definitely familiarize yourself with it, since it's gonna make a lot of the calculations, like here with this volume question, much simpler and go a lot faster. And the last step is we need to plug in our limits here, plug in zero and two and subtract. So I have a factor of, I can write that as pi over two. And just be careful here, you're plugging in x is two, but there's already a two in that exponent. So that's gonna give you e to the four. And then subtract when you plug in zero and I have no idea what e to the fourth power is. Your calculator will give you that, but e to the zero, that's one. So it looks like we get as our simplified final answer here, pi over two times e to the four minus one. And that is a nice exact value. If you want to, you can plug that into your calculator to get an approximate decimal value, but that's the exact volume here. Hope you enjoyed this simple disk method problem. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.